Hi there! Welcome to Pilot University. Today we are here for episode 2 of our series of giving every Pokemon a scientific name. Now just a quick reminder of the rules, just like last time. Uh, every name will be in Latin or Greek, depending on the circumstance. If you happen to know either of those languages, please don't rip me too hard for my pronunciation or grammar. And lastly, every member of an evolutionary line has the same scientific name. For example, in the real world, a caterpillar that turns into a butterfly, you know, the caterpillar and the butterfly have the same scientific name because they are the same species, it's just sort of the larval form of that butterfly. So same animal, same name. And that actually comes up a couple times in this episode. So with that, let's get into the first one on today's list. If you remember from last episode, we ended off with Wigglytuff. And next in the Pokedex is the Zubat line, but since it's Generation 1 Pokedex so far, we've only got Zubat and Golbat. So instead of talking about them because they're not the end of the line, we'll be starting off today with Crobat, whose scientific name is Tetraterris Sanguius. This means four bloody wings, and even though Zubat and Golbat don't have four wings, clearly Crobat does. And like I said, we're talking mainly about the final form of an evolutionary line. And the Sanguis, the bloody part of the scientific name, comes from the Pokedex entries of all three members of this line talking several times about something to do with blood or sucking blood. Next up, we have one that the Pokedex has already given us, which is Vileplume and Bellossum. And it's actually really interesting to think about Pokemon that evolve into separate, that can evolve into two separate Pokemon, such as Gloom or Poliwhirl, and how that works evolutionarily. And there's a video in the works about how that happens, but we'll put that off for now. And like I said, the Pokedex has actually already given us this one in the form of Oddish's Fire Red version of Pokedex entry, which says that its scientific name is Adium Wondrous. I would assume that this is based off of several of Oddish's other Pokedex entries, saying that at night it walks around on its two roots, meaning that it's two legs, basically. Um, and I'm guessing the Oddium comes from its name being Oddish. The best translation that I could find is this uh, Oddium Wondrous, meaning Odd Wanderer, which is a very rough translation, even for me not knowing Latin, um, but that's the best thing I could find. Next up, we have Parasect, whose name is Belitus Princeps, which means Mushroom Ruler. Now, I gave it this name not implying that Parasect rules over mushrooms, but rather the mushroom rules over Parasect, because it's pretty well documented that Parasect basically does not have a mind of its own anymore. It is completely controlled by the fungus that is using it as a host. Following Parasect, we have another bug type, Venomoth. Last episode, I talked very briefly about a theorized relationship between Venomoth and Butterfree, uh, and I'm, I'm going to go into that a little bit more in detail right now. It's not a super long theory. The evidence for it is kind of, you know, if you see it, you, you see it. If you don't, you don't. Basically, it's that Venonat looks an awful lot like Butterfree. Namely, its eyes, its mouth, its hands, its antenna. It basically just looks like a rounder Butterfree without wings. Whereas um, Caterpie, I guess Caterpie's eyes are mostly the reason. They look a lot more like the eyes of Venomoth than they do the eyes of Butterfree. So it's theorized, or hypothesized I guess, that there was some kind of mix-up in that Venonat was supposed to evolve into Butterfree and Caterpie was supposed to evolve into Venomoth. You know, obviously, Pokemon is probably never going to confirm that, so we don't have any concrete evidence, but I kind of like the idea, and because of that, I decided to place Venomoth in the same genus as Butterfree, which is Orbophagus, and the species name of Venomoth being Orbophagus pulverus, which means powdery circular lens. Something that's really important to note when you're talking about species is that, uh, for example, I use the species name for humans, which is Homo sapiens. Now, if you're talking about the genus, the genus would be Homo. Whereas if you're talking about the species, it is not just sapiens. The species name is Homo sapiens. So if you just say sapiens, that is not correct. You have to say the entire genus and species because together that makes the species name. Anyway, back to Venomoth. Uh, I gave it that name because the circular lens part comes from the genus that I gave Butterfree, 
and the powdery, which uh, is the pulveris part of the uh, species name, comes from e almost every Pokedex entry referring to uh, a toxic powder that it gives off when it flies. Coming up on our first Alolan form Pokemon of this episode, Dugtrio. Dugtrio's scientific name is Tritopus Crypsis, which means three hidden moles. This one's fairly obvious because it is the mole Pokemon. There's three of them, and we don't know what the rest of its body besides its head look besides its head looks like. So I think that was pretty fitting. As for the Alolan versus Cantonian forms, I had some fun with this one. Uh, so for the Cantonian form, the name is Tritalpus Crypsis Calvis, which means bald. And the Alolan form is Tritalpus Crypsis Hansonii. And if you've ever heard of the band Hanson, or if you're sort of a 90s child like me, Hanson was a little bit before my time when they were really popular. Um, but as a 90s kid, I definitely know who Hanson is. Basically, they were a somewhat popular, they had a couple very popular songs, but they themselves were incredibly popular, uh, pop band in the mid, or in, in basically the entire 90s. Um, they still make some songs now, but they're not very good, let's be real. Um, but if you look at them and you look at Alolan Dugtrio, I think it's very clear where they got the inspiration for Dugtrio's hair from. So because of that, I wanted to give a little shout out to Hanson. Next we have another Alolan form, which is Persian. Persian's scientific name is Pardus elegans, which means elegant panther. Um, and you know, I think that's also quite obvious because it's some kind of big cat. And Persian is very well known for being a symbol of status, being a very elegant Pokemon. At least, Cantonian Persian is. I personally think Alolan Persian is so ugly. Like, its head just does not fit with its body. I think it just looks weird. So, I decided to make the subspecies names for the Alolan forms kind of reflect that. Uh, for Cantonian Persian, it is Pardus elegans gracilis, which means slender. And for Alolan Persian, the scientific name is Pardus elegans cephalus, which means head. Moving away from Alolan forms for a little bit, we have Golduck, whose scientific name is Pseudanimus anatina, which means false-minded duck. I think this was really appropriate because obviously, A, it's a duck, and B, like almost everybody else in the world, at one point in my life, I was completely convinced that Golduck was a psychic type. So much like how uh, Charizard's genus name was Pseudo Draco, which means fake dragon, I decided to make Golduck, uh, Golduck's genus reflect its fake typing as well, which is fake psychic type, so false minded. Up next, we have our first fighting type Pokemon on the list, Primeape. Primeape is really well known for having an extreme temper. Uh, whether it's in the anime for like the one episode, like episode and a half that Ash had one, um, as well as in almost every one of its Pokedex entries, mentions it its temper being so extreme that it basically just fights things until it falls asleep. So to reflect this, and for a little bit of fun, I named it Ira Billis, which literally means anger anger. For this next one, I have to give a little bit of background on the Pokemon itself, which is Arcanine. Arcanine is well known uh, to people who were around back in Gen 1 and watched the Gen 1 anime as it came out. Arcanine was, as most people see it, originally supposed to be one of the legendary Pokemon from Generation 1, but then they decided to make Arcanine a regular Pokemon and then make all three of the legendary trio bird Pokemon. So, which is also why Arcanine is listed in the Pokedex as the legendary Pokemon, that is its Pokedex classification. But, as we all know, it is not really a legendary Pokemon. So because of that, I gave Arcanine the name Pseudofabula Primus, which means first fake legendary. Much like Vileplume and Blossom earlier, having two different Pokemon at the ends of the same evolutionary line, we have Polyrath and Politoed. I gave both of them the scientific name Virani Lactes, which means double frog guts. That might sound like really weird and sort of cringy, but uh, the double comes from there being two of them. I would have given Vileplume and Belossum a similar kind of thing if there wasn't already a name for them canon in the Pokedex. Um, but, you know, obviously there's two of them, so that's where the bi in the part of the genus comes from. Rani is Latin for frog. And Lactes, which means guts, comes from uh, Poliwag, Poliwhirl, and Poliwrath 
all uh, having the spiral on their ch uh, chest or stomach, whatever you want to call it, being based off of uh, some species of tadpoles who have skin on their stomach so thin that you can see their intestines, which looks like sort of like that hypnotic swirly kind of pattern. So that's where, that's why these Pokemon have it, so I wanted their name to reflect that as well. Alakazam was kind of a weird one, and the name doesn't translate to anything incredibly well, just because I don't really know what Alakazam is. Like, I've looked at it, and like, some people think it's supposed to be some kind of like a goat, some people think it's sort of like a fox, I honestly just have no idea. So I couldn't base the scientific name off of any kind of animal, so I just went with what they show us for Alakazam. So Alakazam's scientific name is Giga Cerebrum Bicochleri, which means t large brained two spoons. I mean, it's got a big brain, it's really smart, and it's got two spoons. I don't know, that's pretty much all I got. On the opposite side of Alakazam, we go to Machamp, whose scientific name is Tetrabrachus Maximus, which means four biggest arms. I don't think there's too much more explanation that needs to happen there. It's got four arms, and they're really big. Next up, we have definitely the easiest one of the episode, which is Victory Bell. Uh, Victory Bell's scientific name literally means acid pitcher, because it's based off of a pitcher plant, and I'm pretty sure every Pokedex entry for Victory Bell refers to its really strong acid inside of its stomach. And the scientific name is Ursius Acidum. Rounding off the final three of this list, we have Tentacruel, whose scientific name is Gelata Atroxis, which means fierce jelly. I looked for like a direct translation to cruel, because I would have done cruel jelly instead, but fierce was the closest thing that I could find, so that's there's not really much else about Tentacruel. And people say Generation 5 was really unoriginal, like Tentacruel is literally just a giant jellyfish with eyes. Second to last on today's list, we have Golem and Alolan Golem, whose scientific name is Chalapis Fragor, which means Exploding Stone Turtle. You know, there are different ideas about what Golem is. Um, I always kind of thought that Golem was some kind of turtle. Alolan Golem makes me think that a little bit less, but that's still the closest thing that I'm able to relate them to. Um, if you have thoughts about what Golem might be, let me know down below, but that's the best thing that I can come up with. I chose this name, A, because I believe that they're kind of turtles, they're made out of rocks, and they're well known for exploding, like any time I see any member of that line. Not so much Geodude, but definitely Graveler or Golem, I'm like, instantly, this thing's going to use explosion or self-destruct on me. Although, I think this a little bit less about uh, Alolan Golem and Alolan Graveler, so for Cantonian Golem, I gave it the subspecies name Chalapis Fragor Crepidus, which also means explosion. Whereas for Alolan Golem, I gave it the name Chalapis Fragor Barbus, which means beard. And lastly for today's episode, we have Rapidash, whose scientific name is Celerignus Equus, which literally means fast fire horse. It is well known in all of its Pokedex entries for being able to run extremely fast, and it's a horse that's fiery. And that wraps up today's list. So altogether, that is 30 species down and about 380 to go. Um, like I said at the end of last episode, most episodes will contain roughly 12 to 15. I'm trying to air more towards 15 uh, because I don't want to be doing this for like three years um, per episode. So hopefully that should try to keep it around 12-ish minutes is what I'm aiming for time-wise. I don't want them to be too long because then you guys obviously don't want to watch a super long video, uh, but too short and I feel like it's just not enough content for me personally. Keep an eye out next Wednesday, a week from today, for episode 3 of this series, as well as this weekend for the continuation of our normal programming about just general Pokemon theories and Pokemon science. If you're excited to learn more scientific names and learn more about Pokemon science in general, feel free to subscribe, follow us on Twitter at Pala underscore you. Um, I try to put up more stuff about it. I'm not incredibly active on Twitter, but I'm definitely working on it. Um, in the next couple of days, while I'm going about my classwork here at school, I will try to 
put up some more content on Twitter about what, what it's really like to be in the life of a scientist. Uh, just what we do in our everyday life. So if you want, if you're curious about that and want to know what people like me actually do in our life, <laughs> uh, definitely follow me on Twitter to uh, to check that out. And as always, there's a time and place for everything.